Now I'm gonna tell you about the real country trying to influence our economy, our culture, our government. How's it going, everybody? I've got an update for you on the ongoing cultural civil war. But first, let me just say, it really does feel like racial tensions are bad right now in the U.S. With groups like the, the alt-right, white nationalists and Black Lives Matter, it feels like people are starting to gather around this idea of identity politics that there's some traits about them that define the politics they should follow. We're hearing now that a leaked report from the FBI shows that their terrorism unit feels black identity extremists pose a real threat. And this report was first revealed by foreign policy. It's stoking fears that law enforcement may be unjustly targeting civil rights groups and social justice activists. Now let's be real. The US government and law enforcement have done some really messed up things in the past and they still do a lot of messed up things today. So I don't think the fears are entirely unfounded, but there are reasons to believe that black identity extremists do pose a threat. For instance, the Dallas shooter. Remember that, a guy in Dallas with a rifle shot and killed five cops. In another instance, outside of my apartment in New York City, a black identity extremist went up to a squad car with an Asian and Latino cop and killed both of them. So there are instances where we can say that, yeah, they, these people do pose a threat. Naturally, many people have tried to conflate this with Black Lives Matter. People on the right saying, see, the FBI is essentially saying Black Lives Matter is a, is a real threat. But it's not just the right. Even prominent activist DeRay McKesson has likened this, this claim by the FBI to Black Lives Matter saying, we knew that we were likely being watched. This is confirmation that the work of social justice continues to threaten those in power. So it would seem like no matter which side you're on, left or right, this leaked report from the FBI makes it seem like Black Lives Matter is in the crosshairs. Now, personally, I don't think that Black Lives Matter is on par with black nationalists who go around shooting people. But I think people are trying to earn political points on both sides. The right saying, oh, see, look, this does include Black Lives Matter. They are dangerous. And Black Lives Matter activists saying, oh, look, we're being un unjustly targeted by law enforcement. But the reality is racial tensions are just seemingly getting worse. Now, I, I, I certainly believe things are a lot better than they've been in a long time. But with the news and, and hearing things like this, it kind of feels like it's bad, at least we can say that. Now, let's let's move on from here and, and carry on with this idea of the cultural civil war because there's a bunch of really weird ideas and stories that kind of link together as we talk about racial tension in the US. Regardless of whether or not it, it is getting worse, we have seen stories that, for instance, Russia or Russian trolls were supporting Black Lives Matter by buying ads on Facebook that they were selling t-shirts that say blacktivist because as many people believe their goal is to fan the flames of racial tension, cause instability within our culture and our government. And now this starts to move into the realm of the political conspiracy theories. The left has their conspiracy theory that Russia is everywhere, that Russia is trying to influence our, our government and cause all of these problems. We've heard the story about how Facebook ads were bought by the Russian troll house Whose, whose goal was to create division amongst Americans. Thus, we see this fighting, and then we end up seeing black identity extremists committing murders. We see the rise of the alt-right in events like Charlottesville. So this all starts to tie together in a really strange way. Maybe, maybe there is a singularity of some sort. Maybe everything we're seeing in the news that seems to be different might be part of one event. But I digress, because now I'm gonna push that all to the side and talk about the real conspiracy. You ready for this? It's not Russia. The left is obsessed. They think Russia is doing all this. Sure, do the Russian trolls buy ads and, and sell t-shirts with, let's say, blacktivist on it and try and fan the flames? Yeah, maybe. I mean, we can't say definitively, but we believe this might be happening. Does Russia today, the Russian state television network, international, do they hire left-wing personalities to talk about core issues and, and push an agenda? Sure, a lot of people believe so. But the reality is they don't get that many views. Yeah, on YouTube, they get a decent amount, thousands, maybe tens of thousands. But some reports say that they only get around 30,000 views on their primetime shows. Now I'm gonna tell you about the real country trying to influence our economy, our culture, our government. Qatar, that's right. Qatar, a small Middle Eastern country who's Al Jazeera, who has posted way more divisive content than RT could ever hope to achieve. 
Al Jazeera Plus gets billions of views on Facebook. They have, a, they have an international outlet just like RT, but it's significantly more successful. The RT office, the Sputnik office, they're relatively small. But Al Jazeera Plus operates a decently sized office in San Francisco. It's one of these new media ventures, and it's significantly more influential than Russia will ever be. So if we wanna talk about Russia fanning the flames of racial tension resulting in, say, black identity extremists and white nationalists killing people and creating division or helping to get Donald Trump elected, why aren't we talking about Qatar and Al Jazeera and what they're doing? Oh, because maybe the conspiracies are just that, conspiracies. So. I'm kidding, obviously. I don't think Qatar's goal is to manipulate American politics, but it's the point I'm trying to bring up, that when we talk about issues of racial tension and then we try and blame a foreign government for buying ads that fan those flames, the truth is, it's not just Russia. It's not just Qatar. Guess what? We're doing it to ourselves. This is something I tweeted earlier, that the US is being torn apart by identity politics and large media companies, many of them, are complicit because it's the easiest way to make money. We're at a point now where reporting the news is, it's too easy. Everybody's doing it. Do you need a news network to tell you something happened? No, because you saw it on Twitter right when it happened. In fact, we don't even need reporters to tell us most of the time because some random person who might be at the event might tweet about it or live stream about it. And then we know before see, we might hear about it before the news networks do. In fact, there are many instances where a breaking news story will be on Reddit. A photo will appear on Reddit before the news networks pick it up and then they'll pick it up. So yeah, they do provide a service and, and sometimes the news reporting is important. There's a lot of investigative journalism that can't be done by the average person, so we need that. But how do these media companies fill the gap? Opinion, analysis, and fanning the flames. So I think when we hear these stories, when we hear, uh, you know, DeRay McKesson say that being targeted by the FBI is, you know, a slight against them and then people on the right saying, oh, see, Black Lives Matter is bad, it's just political points. Everyone is trying to use some kind of political issue to gain power for their cause. And usually they're trying to gain power for their cause because, like, I'll be honest, I think they're just trying to gain power for themselves. People want to play whatever card they can to prove their tribe is the correct tribe to be a part of. But we should be paying attention to stories like this so that we have an idea of what's going on because there, there are legal protests and Black Lives Matter certainly engages in these legal protests. And we saw what happened when Black Lives Matter activists went to the mother of all rallies. People mostly got along and, and cheered for each other. And these are great things. So we do want to watch out for government encroachment, expanding government authority. We don't want the feds or anyone to unjustly spy upon activists or violate their constitutional rights. So this story could be a warning sign. But at the same time, let's be real. There really are threats. Dallas, New York. There was a shooting in Tennessee where a man uh, is believed that he was acting in revenge of the Dylan Roof shooting. So these things really do happen. I don't want to say that the racial tension is entirely Russia's fault or Al Jazeera's fault or Vox, Mashable, any one of these digital media outlets, because it's not one of these groups' fault. It's basically everyone's fault. We are all fanning the flames. We're all kind of making the problem worse. In this video, for instance, I am creating division and I recognize that, but you know what? To an extent, I'm kind of okay with the division being between the majority of people and wealthy elites and media companies that are fanning the flames and making people hate each other. I don't think we should blame the individual employees of media companies, but I think we should pay attention to their influence over our lives and how a lot of the issues with Black Lives Matter and social justice and feminism is coming from media companies trying to make money. So I'll, I'll admit this is kind of a weird thread because we have this actually important news story, but then I started thinking about how we, when issues of law enforcement and racial profiling and all this stuff, it starts to tie itself together in some strange way. But now I have a request for you. Here's what I want you to do. Go on Twitter and start following someone outside of your bubble. If, you know, look at the video I did yesterday where I talked about these two sides, the left and the right are totally detached from each other. It will be very, very important for you if you are in the, the left bubble or if you are in the right bubble or if you're in neither to find a few people that are in those bubbles and follow them, cross over and follow them. Because I, I do that and I, and I can see these two different universes happening in real time. It doesn't matter if you agree with these people. It just matters that you're paying attention to what they're talking about. And not only that, but maybe even engage with, in conversation with them if they're open to it. I know 
people on both sides sometimes don't want to. And I know people on both sides claim that they're the ones who are trying to. But the reality is, at least listen. So in, in the worst case scenario, you'll understand why they think the things they do. It doesn't mean we're going to solve every problem overnight, but hey, let's build bridges and try and better understand where these factions are coming from. More to the point, if you're a journalist who follows me, start following new right personalities because as we saw, journalists don't follow any of these people, and that's a huge problem too. The last thing I want to say is that although sometimes it feels like things are getting worse, it's actually a lot better than it's ever been. Certainly in some areas it could be, it could be said to be worse. But according to this FBI report, they believe that black identity extremism peaked in the 60s and 70s. So I don't think we need to be as worried about it as people may have been in the past, and I don't even think they were as worried back then. We hear these news stories, we get worried about governments spying on us, we get worried about extremists hurting us, but although these are things we should pay attention to because we want to solve these problems, it doesn't mean that the likelihood is increasing. And I will say that being focused on them, even as the likelihood decreases, is great because in many ways that could help to maybe even decrease the likelihood that bad things happen. But I don't know for sure. It's just a few ideas that I wanted to share today as I'm still in Barcelona and I'm actually about to go to a protest. So stay tuned because there's gonna be breaking news here in Barcelona and I'm on the ground covering it. Sunday is a big Spanish nationalist event and Monday is the Declaration of Independence. So if you've been following me, you know that I'm here. But until those things happen, these are the stories that I have for you. So thank you all so much for watching. Comment below and let me know what you think. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at TimCast. If you want to support my work, go to TimCast.com forward slash donate. Give whatever you'd like or give nothing at all. My videos are always free and available every day at 4 p.m. And stay tuned for breaking news around the world and live streams. And I will see you then.